Yeah, it's time to start the show Off the top rope, four figure leg lock Ric Flair with the chest chop Hater is wonder why I never tap out A young king like Demarcus Undertaker with a coffin Choke slam so often Stone Cold Steve Austin Man the boy keep flossing Man the boy keep talking I'm with David I'm the same And I got something to say Wrestling with things, you know the girl, you know exactly what is up. Feel free to hit the subscribe button at the bottom corner of your screen and subscribe to us at Wrestling With Things on YouTube and do not forget to like our page on Facebook at Wrestling With Things. We got some good stuff for you here today. David Joseph joined by Sammy Joseph as usual. And Boston fans, particularly Boston Celtics fans, NBA fans, Isaiah Thomas fans, we got some good topic for you. So, let's get right into it. The Players' Tribune, Isaiah Thomas has sent his farewell letter officially to the Players' Tribune, basically giving his farewell to Boston and to summarize the trade and the scenario and how he felt, etc., etc. Sammy, first of all, I'm going to say this was a very good read. Like, it sounds emotional and S-A-W-F-T soft, but, you know, it, it, it hit home. It, 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 was, it was deep. I could tell it came from the heart. Deep, deep stuff here. Basically, he talks about the call Danny Ainge gave him to tell him the trade was official. Excuse me. He talked about what his kids' reactions were when they found out about him going to Cleveland specifically. Even talked about the unfortunate passing of his sister and loyalty in the NBA between players and owners. So I gotta ask you, Sammy, what did you take away most from this farewell letter from Isaiah Thomas? Honestly, a hundred percent, I feel for the guy. I really, I really do, man. Cause this guy, like, looking at his letter, you could clearly like hear. Like, well, you obviously can't hear, but you could tell, like, he actually feels hurt. He actually put his health on the line for the Celtics. He, not only that, he put his emotional health when he played mm -hmm. right after his sister, you know, passed away. And not only that, you know, looking at it from his standpoint, he, he's saying, you know, I took you guys the furthest you guys, you know, been since the big three pass era. And you guys just threw me away like I was nothing. Despite the fact that I played with a bad hip, you know, I played with my sister's passing, and you guys literally just threw me away. And, I, and not only that, you know, he's looking at it in a way like, you know, is Kyrie really that much of a difference for me, even though, you know, I, I just got you guys the farthest you've ever been. You, you know, nothing you said was wrong, and you make some good points, and I, I do think some of the feelings you just described so well that is probably some of what he felt and those are some valid points but i want to be honest here and it and this is all due respect to isaiah thomas this is all due respect to boston fans this this is no malice at all but this is me from the heart at the same time i gotta feel this some validity excuse me, some validity to this. Isaiah Thomas got traded to the Cleveland Cavaliers. You're right. Yes, he did uh, play when his sister passed. He he did put his heart, soul, blood, sweat, and tears and all five foot eight of his body into every single game. And he's won them some fourth quarters. Man, this guy is Mr. Fourth Quarter. Oh, but... But you know what? I, I'm starting to get a little uncomfortable, and I do not mean to make anybody else uncomfortable. I'm getting a little uncomfortable that this is essentially becoming a sob story, and it's almost like the unfortunate passing of his sister is just becoming a part of the narrative to 
say, oh, Danny A traded him even when his sister passed and he played through it. I don't mean that in a bad way, but it's kind of becoming that, and I don't like that. This is basketball business. This is basketball 101. Danny Ainge did not have any malice intent. I think they loved Isaiah. I think the fans love him. I think the Celtics brass was good to him, despite them trading him away when they seen the opportunity to get better, in my opinion. I think they're the best team in the East now, if we're talking right now. I know they haven't played a game yet, but they look like the better team from top to bottom. And I guess I don't want that. I don't want this to turn into that because... Isaiah Thomas just simply got traded like a lot of other players in the history of the league have been. Don't turn it into, you know, he did this and that. Because a lot of guys have done a lot for their True. franchise. I, he did. Don't get me wrong. I don't get it twisted. He did it all. He did everything he could. But I think this was simply the Celtics seeing an opportunity finally to pull the trigger. And they did it. And my second take is one thing that really resonated with me in my heart of hearts is we got to give credit where credit is due. Isaiah Thomas, I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but he went on in the letter to mention when people look at KD's situation when a player is finally free and they decide to go to the team that they really want to or they really think is best for them. They get called the coward. They get called all types of names. You know the social media era. They call, call people everything. So Isaiah Thomas was essentially saying when people do that, it's a little of a misguided perspective because look what the owners and the GMs just did to me. I, I was loyal as long as I could, but they still shipped me out when they saw a good chance. So it, we do maybe got to change our perspectives and not demonize people like Durant because a GM could do that to you and no one cares. It's all oh, well, a trade that was best for business. But when a player chooses to go somewhere that best fits them, someone got a big opinion about that, it. That is, it is a good point. But I, I honestly was confused when he brought up Kevin Durant because that's that's. True. It, no, it is different. But it, it, he just he. I think he was just relating it with the loyalty factor. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I understand the loyalty factor, but you you got to look at it from two different positions. At the end of the day, Danny Ainge did make the best deal for him because of your your hip and you refusing, that is a big part of it you yeah. refusing to get surgery so at the end of the day he got to look at it like and take a little bit of blame himself like you can't you can't look at them like they're the old evil bad guys when they they at the end of the day they still want to build for their future they still want to go on to some someday win a championship but at the same time looking at it from from his position he did lay everything down on the line and they and they kind of threw him a little a little easy. It seems like they didn't even try to like bargain very, a lot from. But in all fairness, him, like nothing. In all fairness, he was with the Celtics for what two and a half, three years. Yeah. It's not like this was a a Dirk Nowinski Mavs relationship of like ten plus years or Tim Duncan. He, he did a lot. Don't get me yeah, wrong. He, he was something. he bled green, but. I think this was too good of an opportunity and the Celtics shouldn't be looked at like they were simply not respectful of Isaiah Thomas as a person because I think they work and I think we all do for the most part. He's a great player and hopefully he can get back to playing good basketball. Yeah, but at the same time, you know, bringing up guys like Tim Duncan and Dirk Nowitzki, he, he felt like he wanted to build something like that with them and, and, and he wanted to like go down as a guy who went there and stuck there throughout his whole prime and his whole career. So when they just threw him away, I feel like it kind of stung a little bit. It stung inside of him. There, there's no... He, he has, felt like he built he built something with the team. He felt like he built... He has the right to build something. Yeah, uh, he absolutely has the right to feel that way. But I think, you know, podcasters, pundits, commentators, analysts... I think it's somewhat getting somewhat a little tweaked and interpreted that it, it, it was a little like personal. It wasn't personal. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't. And if you think Danny Ainge should have never traded Isaiah Thomas, or you think Isaiah Thomas was, excuse me, the better piece in the trade, feel free to let us know in the comment section. Join the conversation. Help us speak about the NBA, all sorts of topics in sports and entertainment. Subscribe to us on YouTube at Wrestling With Things.